uh, the interest is going into beta. All these technology stocks, you got Apple today, uh, went absolutely nuts, and we'll get to the pivot in a second. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome uh, to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Um, somebody asked me uh, today, are, are, are you concerned between uh, the disconnect between the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the Russell, right? The IWM to what's going on uh, with the NASDAQ Composite with the Qs. And I turned around and I said, well, well what's going on? And, and that's the point. Um, I, I think this market has been so specifically disconnected years and years and years ago. What used to be good or bad for one index was probably mirrored and being pulled down by something else. In the last 10 years, um, everything has changed. The dynamics have changed and individual stocks uh, versus overall indexes have kind of been like, you know, the days of the past. Uh, I, I don't think there's a lot of emphasis anymore on what the Russell does versus Apple or what the Russell does uh, versus NVIDIA or so forth and so on. So when they asked me that, when the person asked me this question, aren't you afraid that there are so many stocks that are not doing anything versus a few, I said, well, well, what's, well what do you mean everything versus a few? Um, and when you look at a lot of the market and you start looking at, you know, a lot of the financial stocks, you know, pretty much calmed down and started going lower. You got Goldman Sachs, uh, you got Citibank, right? You got Citibank, Bank of America, so forth and so on. Uh, you have a lot of components of the IWM, which is basically the smaller uh, capitalized companies. They haven't been do doing anything for about two weeks since they got rejected. But the problem is, and especially when you look at um, from, from the individual point of process and reference, my strong suit is technology, okay? My whole world starts and ends with uh, the NASDAQ 100. And normally I would turn around and go, well, yeah, you know, financials are not participating. You got consumer cyclicals are not participating. Maybe, I, I mean, I don't even know what the airlines are doing. Yeah, airlines are not participating. I'm assuming cruise ships are not participating, right? Yeah, it looks crazy. How could, you know, how could the market go up with only X amount of stocks taking it up? Here's, that's, here's the difference, right? Usually that would be 100% correct. Usually if there was only like, if it was like, say for example, RBLX and Lucid, I'm just using two recent runners. If it was just RBLX and Lucid, you know, making these really big runs every single day and everything else was kind of weak, I would say, hey guys, you know, you gotta be very, very careful. You gotta look at the mass versus kind of the sum of the parts which only a company. In this juncture, it's a little bit different. The sum of the parts are Apple, right? Or Apple, or Amazon, or Google, right? Or Google, um, you know, what else, what else? NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA, AMD, Qualcomm, right? Qualcomm, you got, uh, what else we got going on here? We got Google, right? We got Shopify making a big move. So the point is, usually when you look at the rest of the market, you're like, wow, you're absolutely right. Now you're talking about the stocks that are making moves and carrying, you know, carrying the weight of the indexes. These are the darlings of Wall Street. These are the cult stocks. These are the names that fund managers want to own, especially towards the end of the year with their window dressing. Because again, when you have your end of the year review with your clients and your beginning outlook of 2022, they want to know, well, why are you long? Why are we long Peloton? instead of Amazon? Why are we long Roku instead of Apple? Why are we long Beyond with these shitty tasting burgers, right? Instead of, for example, uh, NVIDIA. And that's the point. Uh, the market is wrapping up towards the end of the year. We got about a week before Thanksgiving, uh, about a, a week, uh, a month and change before Christmas, and about a month and a half till New Year's. People are scrambling. Not everybody is technology sensitive. People are scrambling to get these stocks on their books so they don't have to have their conversation 
with, you know, with John that's an accredited investor that put a million dollars into your fund and he wants to know why am I bleeding in Peloton while Amazon's putting up $200 candles every single day. And this is the important part. These are the darlings. These are the, uh, these are the, the favorites of Wall Street. They want to be marking them up. So no matter what's happening with the rest of Wall Street, Wall Street doesn't care. We want to be in, right? This is what Wall Street's saying without actually saying it. We want to be in the names that are going to mark up the quarter, are going to look good on our books, and are, we're going to, we don't need to convince our customers because they use Amazon, they use Apple, they use Facebook, they use uh, you know, anything under the sun that, that is moving and shaking right now, that we could have an easier transition to 2022. If you have the Beyonds on your books and the Pelotons and the Roku, you're having a different conversation. So a lot of names are kind of being dropped uh, drop to the sidelines, uh, a lot of speculation money names, again, that are represented in the IWM are kind of, kind of getting pushed aside as well. And all of the fortunes, all the money flow, all of uh, the interest is going into beta. All these technology stocks, you got Apple today, uh, went absolutely nuts, and we'll get to the pivots in a second, went absolutely nuts, all of a sudden, they're coming out with, with their own car, or at least the notion of coming out with their own car. That's obviously a big dent to the whole EV market. Apple has figured it out, right? Apple has figured it out in every single walk of life. Eventually, when they come out with this car, whether it's two, 2025, 2085, they're going to put a lot of, you know, they're going to put a lot of um, uh, a lot of pressure on all these EV, EV makers, including uh, a Tesla itself. Again, we'll get to Tesla in a second. Uh, money flow, right? They're going into Amazon. Guys, this is this is the order flow from Amazon today. And again, I've, I've always maintained that when you're looking at option flow, even if you're not an options trader, I'm not an options trader, I trade equity, right? Even if you're, if you're not an options trader, you, you have to have an option scanner to show you where the institutional money flow is. They, you know, keep this in mind, the stock broke out today above 3,600, right? We talked about this whole channel for a couple of days, finally broke out today, majestic move, absolutely majestic move. They were coming, guys, look at the order flow that they were coming for Amazon, just to give you an idea how institutional money flow wants to mark things up to the end of the year. This guy bet $200,000 that Amazon a month from now, right? A month from now, basically three full weeks of trading is gonna be at 4,000, okay? The stock when he made that bet was at 36.35. This guy for next week's, for next week's, uh, for next week's uh, expiration bets 100 that the stock is gonna be, was, it was gonna be 100 points higher than what he did enter the trade. This guy was putting in a million two on the December 3,700 calls. So this is when the stock was at 3,650. Look at this bet right here, folks. Look at this bet right over here. This guy bet the December 4,000 calls, nearly a half a million dollars. But this is the bet that stood out for me. And I, and I knew this thing was going to absolutely take off. Once they started betting, okay, this guy came in when the stock was at 3,677 near the high of the day. This guy came in and bet 625,000 that the stock is going to, the, the stock expiration for tomorrow. He bet 600 grand that the stock at this juncture was going to be about 100 points higher tomorrow than it is today. And this guy came in for 2.3 million. So the option order flow is going to dictate as much as you want to you know, compare anything to anything. This is where the institutional money flow. And when it comes and confirms a daily chart, like for example, today, Amazon broke above the 3,600 level. Good things are going to happen. Again, look at the bets on Apple today, right? Apple started moving today. You started seeing these really aggressive bets coming in. You started seeing the January 175s, right? 175s. They were coming in in the money, December 170s, uh, next week's 160s, uh, this week's uh, th this week's expiration 160s, tomorrow's 160s. So the option market is continuing to fuel the equity market, and it doesn't make a difference what everything else is doing. The darlings, the cold stocks, the ones that everybody wants to have on their books going into the end of the year, they're the ones waking up. That's where the money flow is. And going into tomorrow, you might, the funny thing is, I actually have maybe three or four ideas that I like to the long side, but they're this, right? They're this, they're Amazon. You know, look at, look at Tesla money flow. Look at the Tesla money flow, guys, right? Look at the Tesla money flow uh, going, into, going into tomorrow. You had, you had the 1,200 calls. This guy bet $4 million in a month and a half from now, the stock is gonna be at 1,200. These guys are not uncertain. Nobody's just making a bet 
uh, uh, taking a shot you know, to the moon. Let's see if the stock can get that. This is serious money being put to work here, uh, right? 1,200 for the Januaries. They came in for the 1110s, uh, 1110s expiration tomorrow. This dude came in with three weeks of expiration. This dude just bet 700,000 that the stock in the, in the next three weeks will be 170 points higher. That's where the money flow is. That's what I'm watching for tomorrow. Look at the 60 minute view, right? Look at the 60 minute view on Tesla. Look at the top of the range here. It's clear as day. Once this thing clears out this, this whole top of the range here, look how much room you have. Again, we talk about it all the time. Stocks trade from supply to supply, demand to demand. Well, here's supply. If this supply gets, gets confirmed, right? Look how much room you have up to the next supply zone. So we are definitely set uh, for tomorrow. Uh, Amazon, any dip tomorrow will get completely gobbled up on rising 60 minute support apple any dip tomorrow on the rising 60 minute support will get will get eaten up as well even though nvidia didn't have this banner day after the open it's still a really good strong candidate tomorrow for a sneaky 60 minute channel back to the upside having said that i like a lot of shorts as well okay just be in case the market disconnects again guys zillow has turned into be a phenomenal trade right oops let me just get this out of the way Zillow has been turning into a, an absolute phenomenal move. It broke down. We've been talking about this nonstop. It broke down below 63. The stock is at 57. Look at these setups going into tomorrow. You got beyond, right? You got beyond. If this thing starts taking out earnings low, it's going to do exactly the same thing Zillow did. It's going to start drifting for a couple of weeks. Look at Splunk. We started talking about Splunk a couple of days ago. Look at Splunk. It's very, very close to confirming its earnings low as well. So we have a lot of value tomorrow, some up to the upside, some to the downside, but the most important part is we have things that are tangible, that have a catalyst behind them, whether it's option order flow, or in this case of a Splunk or a Beyond, or even a Zillow that's continuously active is still still drifting lower, an earnings catalyst that, that disappointed the street. So we are set up. We're not looking to trade anything random. I don't care about these other BS names that the hot stocks of the day. This is where the hot money flow is. And if these stocks confirm, you should have much more, um, much more bias in that side of direction. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Again, just really, well, you'll see. Uh, Boeing, we were watching, got upgraded. That 234 level was really, really big. Unfortunately, Boeing got nowhere near the 234. Uh, AMAT, we were watching. They said, well, you know, maybe this thing runs ahead of its earnings tonight. Uh, it, it never took out the 159. The stock is ten, down 10 uh, after the close. Maybe puts a little, maybe puts a little, um, uh, maybe puts a little bit of pressure on semiconductors tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, Apple broke out yesterday above the 53.20. Today, it needs to confirm the 155. It went almost to 159. I still like it uh, for tomorrow. Uh, any dips, uh, MXCT is still valid, never got there. Uh, AMAT, 160, 159 linear regression, never confirmed. Again, stock is down 10. And here we go, right? Here we go. So Amazon, 35.96, 3,600 needs to build. Right now, it's trading 37.02, 100 points higher. Uh, after the close, amazing, just an absolute rock star move. Uh, NVIDIA, there was actually two things here. First, there was um, a remount that we did off this rising support into the 316 level. It actually took out every va valid point. It took out the 320, it took out the 323, it traded the 327, but really, really aggressive move down um, and, and finished around 317. I still think uh, I want to give it the benefit of the doubt tomorrow. I still think there might be one more run. But again, we'll, I, I'm not really crazy about how they closed it. But in all terms, this is still the highest close in this whole formation. Uh, Abby, uh, 118 needs to build. Only traded to like 1830 uh, before it's sold off. Uh, RKLB never got to the 1680.17 level. Uh, again, second entries on everything. Obviously, if you trade pivots, you kind of know what that is. Um, you know, Z, Z, uh, Zillow, again, Zillow continues to go down. Guys get down to 25% of your position at 58, went down to 57, still it's still bleeding. Uh, keep your runners on, uh, you know, Zillow, 57. Splunk, I still love it. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Amazon, they're coming in for the 3,700s. Uh, start taking some off, 36, 38. That was the first supply. And then it just absolutely went nuts to 3,700. Um, RBLX, not a big move, but R RBLX for experienced traders, 124 for builds. 
Uh, can you know give some cash flow for later. Here is RBLX, not a big move, but it was a nice little move here as well. So here is RBLX. Here's the 24 went down to like uh, 2080 again. If you caught it, I, I didn't. I didn't do this thing. Um, you know, nice move there. Um, let's see here. Beyond, I still like. Take on the way down. Uh, Apple is absolutely nuts. Uh, AMAT again. We're watching AMAT. Obviously, it never broke the 59 level. So again, we're set up uh, for tomorrow. Some longs, some shorts, but obviously the names we are focusing. On are the names that are the fund managers and obviously what you saw with the institutional money flow they're focusing on as well guys have a great day have a great uh, trading day and I will see you over the weekend take care guys have a great night